In today's video, we're going to go through nine evidence-based study techniques that helped me to rank first in my postgraduate surgical exams while working full-time as a doctor and also building a seven-figure business. We're specifically going to focus on techniques that help us to study smarter, not harder, and I've even included some AI prompts to help us to save even more time too. So let's get right into it. Tip number one is called the reverse study timetable. In med school, I wrote a normal study timetable with subject A one week, then subject B the next week. When studying for exams around a busy day job, I wrote my timetable completely differently. I use what I call the reverse study timetable. While mediocre and bad students put in first when they're going to study, the top students put in when they're not going to study. As I was working a full-time job and building a business, I model studying around my life not the other way around. This meant that I prioritized time for relaxing, socializing, and running my business. When it came to planning my study schedule, I used reverse planning, starting from the curriculum and working backwards, identifying the most challenging topics and putting those first. When it comes to studying, we tend to think that sacrificing everything and working for long hours is the best way to manage our time, but this is actually completely wrong. By taking breaks, looking after ourselves and managing our time effectively, we're much more likely to retain what we're learning in any given study session. Evidence-based study tip number two is all about being strategic with the resources that we're using to revise from. As a professional learner, I just didn't have time to be reading through every single book recommendation on the surgical exam reading list. Most textbooks are enormous and we're often overwhelmed with information from online lectures to textbooks and even from our own notes. I therefore prioritized doing practice exams and past papers to be much more focused and efficient with my time. There's a ton of evidence around the benefit of using active recall as a study method and spending time identifying an online question bank or past papers that provide realistic questions in the format of the final exam at an appropriate difficulty is going to be time well spent. The best online question banks and study apps now also have AI tutors built in that can help us to more quickly and effectively understand difficult concepts and avoid application switching. Being strategic with the resources you use to study and selecting the best ones is a meta tip that isn't talked about enough. Tip number three is something that I call survey and sprints, and it's all about building context around what we're learning before we actually begin. Whether I'm diving directly into questions, reading a book, or looking through the exam syllabus, I'll review all of the material at a superficial level first so that I know what's coming up and what might be hard. I'll do this right at the start of planning my study timetable, and I'll also do this at the start of each study session. And I'll do this in sprints. For example, I might first survey and skim over the whole curriculum or book chapter in one specific sprint, which takes me around five to 10 minutes. When I then come to revise a specific topic or chapter in that book, I'll again start with a sprint to quickly survey everything that's in that chapter. If I'm going directly to a question bank, I might skim through a bunch of questions without worrying about whether I'm getting them right or wrong to just survey that content and know how it relates to my existing knowledge. As I do this, I'm focusing on the structure initially and trying to identify anything related to things I already know. I can then focus on the fine details later. Now, surveying isn't complicated. It's just skimming through any learning materials as a kind of first pass to allow our brains to begin building context, which is the main thing that helps with effective encoding of what we're actually learning. So for example, if I was reading through this book and trying to learn The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, I might first flip to the contents page and then quickly flip through each of the individual chapters to just get a feel for what the book is about, how it's laid out, and look at any key concepts or topics that keep coming up. This will take me just a few minutes, and I'm not worrying about learning anything in detail or trying to remember anything on this first survey sprint or first pass of the material. Evidence-based study tip number four is called priming our knowledge, and it's the second deeper pass 
after we've quickly surveyed what we're learning. When we're priming, we want to create a scaffold or foundation for what we're understanding. Our goal is to have a broad understanding of the entire topic we're studying with relevant points linking to things that we already know to help our brains organize any new information. This is what good encoding is all about. To look at this practically, after I've spent the first five minutes of a study session skimming through and surveying the content I'll be learning at a superficial level, I'll now prime my knowledge by spending another five to ten minutes thinking more deeply about this content and I'll focus on building a basic organisational structure in my brain. In simple terms, I'll just be thinking about what the main concepts are and how these relate to what I already know. I'll also be thinking about what I have no clue about and how I'm going to identify and fill in the gaps in my knowledge. All of this primes our brains for deeper, more meaningful learning rather than just encountering a new concept for the first time and then struggling with it because we haven't taken the time to consider where it fits into the wider subject which we're learning and around our existing knowledge. So for a practical example here, again using the Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, if I've been looking through the contents page of the book, I can quickly see that there are a couple of chapters which bring in things like six practices or a six minute Miracle Morning or at the end of the book, the Miracle Morning 30 Day Life Transformation. Now immediately I'm thinking, what do I already know about these things and what does my own morning routine entail? I can then flip to those chapters individually and look through each of those six steps and see whether anything is drastically new or whether it's a variant of what I already know. I now know that there's a challenge coming up at the end of the book and so my goal here is going to be to understand each element of the book contents and then apply that to the challenge at the end to truly know it and apply it to my own life. This is what priming is all about. It's spending a little bit of time with our own brains, thinking about what we've just skimmed through and then thinking about how we can get the most out of it, connect it to our own existing knowledge and apply it to our own life in the future. And this brings us to tip number five, which is to build knowledge over time and increase complexity with every iteration. Learning is a journey, and the best thing about learning is that it doesn't matter if we get something wrong. In fact, according to research, the things we get wrong are the things that we're most likely to remember. When I was at medical school, one of the key things I noticed that the top performing students did differently to everyone else was that they weren't afraid to jump right into self-testing even if they hadn't read around a topic first. By going over and over active recall questions and forcing ourselves to understand topics more deeply, we gradually build up layers upon layers of understanding around a topic, adding on more complexity each time we go over it. As learning is a journey, one hack that I absolutely love is to choose the path of most relevance. We can spend our time learning anything, but our time is best spent studying those high yield topics that will come up regularly at exams. For example, when I studied for surgical exams, I went over these high yield topics multiple times and prioritized them over everything else. Tip six is to improve the quality of our time spent studying by boosting our engagement with what we're learning. Our grades are very much a byproduct of our quality of work and our quality of work is a function of two key factors, our ability to focus and our ability to be consistent with studying. In order to maximize our ability to focus, we need to beat distractions and get into a flow state. If we want to stay consistent with studying, we need to stay healthy and keep our energy levels up for long study sessions. Whether I'm in a class, an online lecture, or studying by myself, I'll try and challenge myself to think, what am I doing to increase my effectiveness at this primary learning event? And for me, this pretty much comes down to two things. Firstly, it's about how we make the content interesting and relevant to us, even if it's boring. And secondly, it's how we look after our health so that we're energized and focused to maximize our ability to learn effectively. When it comes to eating well, staying healthy, and being energized, I'll prioritize these when creating my study timetable. When it comes to making things relevant and interesting, I'll often try and link what I'm learning to something I'm genuinely interested in. I might do this by asking ChatGPT to give me examples of what I'm learning in real life, or if I'm learning something like history, I'll ask ChatGPT to act like a famous historical figure that I can then talk with. Failing that, I'll try and turn the study session into a game by challenging myself to get a set number of active recall questions correct, which works really well if you're using a gamified online question system.
Tip number seven is one of the most important study tips, and it's to focus on understanding rather than on trying to memorize facts alone. If we deeply understand the topic and we can work out the answer, we can deal with most questions that come up. Memorization is helpful as a very basic first step for things like language vocab, but for everything else, I'd always prioritize understanding. There are two really helpful tools that I tend to use that massively help when it comes to understanding any topic. The first is basically a quick sense check using the fine technique. I'll get to the end of a topic and then close my book and challenge myself to explain that topic back in simple terms. If I can do this, it's a great indicator that I understand the elements of the topic and if I can't, I then need to go back to the source material or ask ChatGPT to help explain things more clearly. The second tool is called Bloom's Taxonomy. As I progress through questions from past papers, I'll ask myself whether I can effectively apply and evaluate concepts that I've learned and whether I can create a solution based on my understanding of the concepts matched to the top tiers of Bloom's Taxonomy, showing that I've truly mastered a topic. If I can't do any of these, I can also ask ChatGPT to set me a challenge using a prompt that maps to Bloom's Taxonomy. For example, I could say something like, I'm learning about hypertension in medicine. Give me a question or task that maps to the create section of Bloom's taxonomy to test my understanding. Evidence-based study tip number eight is to do hard things first. When we're studying for exams, there's a very easy temptation to focus on the things that we're good at. So people invariably revise chapter one and chapter two of everything far more than chapters 19 and 20 of any book. For me, when I'm working through topics, I'll either track my progress in an online question bank to see what topics I'm struggling with, or in med school, I used a spaced repetition system with traffic light colors to highlight what I needed to work on. And really, the point of the color coding system here is that it really helps us to target our specific weaknesses. So if you know you're really good at math and you know you suck at geography like I did in school, there's no point spending ages focusing on math or spending exactly the same amount of time focusing on both math and geography. You need to prioritize the hard thing. Whether this is early in the day or whether it's sooner in our revision schedule, we need to attack that difficult topic first. Evidence-based study tip number nine is a reminder that we're not learning for anyone other than ourselves. I've had to sit countless exams in medicine where I felt they were absolutely pointless. But at the end of the day, whether we're studying for exams or learning to improve ourselves, we need to treat learning as importantly as we do our health and our jobs. And this means blocking out time for learning and putting in the effort even when it might feel like a chore. I love getting things wrong and I love learning as I now know that I'm growing as a person. It's the same as going to the gym. Some days I might be tired or I might not want to go, but I know that if I just show up, I'll feel better for it immediately. And by taking action, I'm much more likely to succeed in the long term than if I don't show up at all. If we take ownership of our studying and learning, we're much more likely to study effectively. Now, I've got a great video looking at how I practically approach studying, which will pop up over here, that's definitely worth checking out if you want a bit of a deeper practical deep dive. Thanks so much for watching and for subscribing, and I'll catch you again in the next video.